In this video, we'll be shown the procedure that must be performed in order to pair an orchestrator with two local dashboards. Please refer to manual to know how to deploy OVA files. First, plug in installation on each dashboard. Once you have logged on the local dashboard, you must open the administration page and click on the software updates tab. As soon as you have uploaded the zip file, click on install update button and wait until installation process ends. Second, in order to exchange data with the orchestrator, a local dashboard must send a registration request and wait its acceptance. Just write into the appropriate fields the IP address of the orchestrator and the name with which you want to be recognized. Third, log into the orchestrator in order to accept the request. The local dashboard is added as an accredited client on the orchestrator and shown in its tree structure. Fourth, once the average trend of RAM and CPU for each entity of a registered local dashboard are shown, the pairing process has been completed. Fifth, now you have to replicate these tabs in order to pair another local dashboard with the orchestrator. In this video, we'll be explained how to pair vCenter's networks on Orchestrator Dashboard. Log into Orchestrator Dashboard and go to Administration Panel, then click on Network Configuration tab. When migrating a virtual machine from a data center to another, in order to ensure the availability of the virtual machine, it can multi-cloud algorithm must design to the virtual machine some networks on destination hosts that are compatible with the source ones. Compatible means that the virtual machine must not lose connectivity once migrated or during the migration process. A network can be considered wrong if source and destination distributed switches are not in the same broadcast domain. If this happens, a virtual machine loses network connectivity after migration. The center server does not perform checks for and notify about this problem. It's up to user to choose the right source or destination network coupling. Please refer to manual for details. In order to avoid specifying source or destination network relationships for each migration, since it has an important operation and really easily prone to error, EK Multicloud offers the possibility to specify the right destination network for every source network only one time. In order to define an association between two networks, the following steps must be executed. First, switch type selection, standard or distributed. Second, select source vCenter selection. Third, select source switch. Fourth, Select Source Network. Fifth, select Target vCenter. Sixth, select Target Switch. Seventh, select Target Network. Eighth, specify direction. By directional, in addition to inserting the specified source or destination pairing, will also include a network pairing having source and destination swapped. 9. Click on Pair button in order to complete the process. 10. The created paired networks will be shown in this area. Clicking on the Unpair button in order to remove an already created paired network.
Once all relations between source networks and destination networks have been created, the algorithm will automatically be able to decide the destination host that meets the necessary requirements. In this video, will be explained how to set the cost of energy for each hour of the day on the local dashboard. Log into a local dashboard. Click on the virtual farm icon on the tree. Select the EQ Multi Cloud Plugin tab. Click on the Energy Price tab. A table containing the hours of the day will appear. Just insert the values for every hour, then click on Save. The values will be communicated to the orchestrator. To see them, log in on the orchestrator. Click on the virtual form icon of the appropriated local dashboard. See the values. In this video, we'll be showed how to set the goal that Ecumul to Cloud must reach. Log into the Orchestrator dashboard. On the home page, there is the EQ Multi Cloud target area. Pressing the arrows, it is possible to set the goal energy saving, zero, or load balancing, one. The load balancing deals with the balance of the capacities measured on different data centers. The capacity of a data center is related to the usage of the bottleneck reserves, which typically is the RAM memory. Indeed, the quality of service is deteriorated when one or more data centers are overloaded with respect to the others. The overloading of a data center can lead to the failed adherence to the service level agreements SLA, for example, in terms of responsiveness and reliability of applications. The load balancing can be measured using the HUE metric. Energy and Cost Reduction Policy It is known that the energy consumption at a physical server strongly depends on the CPU consumption. If the major objective is the reduction of energy or the reduction of related costs, a significant optimization is expected by migrating the CPU-intensive VMs. Indeed, the migration of such VMs allows the energy consumption to be reduced since the orchestrator will choose the destination DC on the basis of the energy efficiency of data centers. In other words, some CPU workloads are migrated from a low-efficiency data center to a high-efficiency data center, which allows the overall energy consumption to be reduced. Moreover, since the CPU-intensive VMs use a relatively low amount of RAM, this choice allows to delay the saturation of the most convenient data center in the typical scenario where the RAM is the bottleneck reserves. In this video, we'll be described the process to create a perimeter definition. Log into a local dashboard. Click on the root of the tree, the company level. Then on the EQ Multi Cloud Plugin tab. 
in every local dashboard, there is the ability to select which entities to treat in order to achieve the common goal decided at orchestrator level. The set of selected entities is called EQ Multi Cloud Perimeter. An entity can enter or exit from the local perimeter through the use of two flags. Enable outcoming migration. This flag allows or denies migration. the virtual machines of the entity this flag the allows or to migrate to the entity the ability to receive virtual machines. The value for this flag can be set for all entities except for virtual machine, since a virtual machine cannot host any other virtual machine. The physical entities used by the orchestrator for its operations are host for incoming migrations and virtual machine for outcoming migrations. For convenience and ease of use, the perimeter can also be set up on virtual entities, such as clusters that group physical entities. Setting the perimeter on entity means setting it to all the lowest level entities. For example, enabling incoming migrations on a vCenter means enabling them for all its clusters and hosts. If a top level entity has one of the flags enabled, a lower level entity may override the value by disabling the flag. For example, if on a cluster upcoming migrations are enabled, on a host can be disabled upcoming migrations, overwriting the configuration at the parent node. On each entity are indicated whether one of the parent nodes is out of perimeter for one of the flags. In this case, its flag on the lower level entity cannot be changed. Settings on the local dashboard's perimeter are displayed in read-only mode under Orchestrator. In this video, will be displayed how to enable migration on the Orchestrator dashboard. Log into the Orchestrator dashboard. Orchestrator can work in two ways. Passive mode. It is the default operating mode of the Orchestrator. The performance of the local dashboards are collected but no migrations are performed. To switch to the active mode, just press the button Enter in active mode. The message shown in home page changes its content accordingly to the new setting. Active mode in this mode, all migrations calculated by orchestrator algorithm are performed. To return to passive mode, just click on the button Enter in passive mode. In this video, will be explained how to verify the migrations performed by orchestrator. Log into the orchestrator dashboard. Once the EQ Multi Cloud algorithm has chosen the virtual machines to migrate to remote data center in order to achieve the selected goals, you can check the performed migrations on the home page of the orchestrator. In the migrations in the last month table, there is the list of migrations performed in the last month. Migrations can be filtered by status in progress, completed, completed with error, or scheduled. It is also possible to decide whether to view all migrations or just the last five. For each migration, the following properties are displayed. The name of the virtual machine that has been migrated. The name of the source vCenter, i.e. the hypervisor that owns the VM you are going to migrate. The name of the target vCenter, i.e the hypervisor where the VM you are going to migrate will find its new location. The business goal. It represents the value of the objective at the time of migration. Start date indicates when the migration has started. 
progress. From migrations with the in progress state, the percentage of completion and the refresh button to update it are displayed. Clicking on the plus button, for each migration, some additional information are shown. The virtual machine on which the migration was performed owns source and target VF. They indicate origin and destination dashboards, source, target cluster. They indicate origin and destination clusters, source, and target host. They indicate origin and destination hosts, source, and target data store. They indicate origin and destination data stores, source, and target network. They indicate origin and destination network. Connecting to a VMware vCenter, it is possible to follow the migration in progress.